purpose. I would absolutely say that every pastor is excited about any of his members that are witnessing. I would say that. That's kind of the purpose of training for trainers for you to do what God has already suggested. No, commanded. What he's already commanded, and it is a tool that is in the hands of God's people. Now, we understand this. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. And God gets the glory. But we are his feet. We are his hands. We are even the glove. And he's the hand in the glove actualizing all the things. And so I've seen our people get excited about it. I've seen them have more purpose. I've seen chatty conversations about all the things that are going on. And we have our own group where they come back and they share what's going on as we meet and as we begin to go through the T for T, the training for training, ourselves. So it has been, I believe, the tool for this season of the church. And I would say certainly for our church, but really every church, because the powerful thing about it is that it's not the paradigm that we're used to in America. What we're used to is that when a person comes to faith in Christ, they get a lot of knowledge. And at some point, they're released to go out to share the scriptures and train that they've gotten from their mentor or their Sunday school teacher or pastor or leader. This is day one, understanding that you have a story to tell about what Christ has done for you. It's a paradigm shift because in America, we have to wait a while. But in T for T, as Gene Kai so eloquently taught as he received it from God, it wasn't just another good idea. It wasn't me coming up with something else in my journey of ministry to grow the church because we know if the Lord does not build a house, then those that labor, work, they do it in vain. And so it has been a very purposeful refreshing. We've seen our people at Pursue Church, we've seen them mature in the Lord more regarding just listening to the Holy Spirit in terms of what he is telling them. One of the things that I'm really, really passionate about with regard to T for T is what I would call for me, and I know there are four, I know there are four commands, but I'm really passionate about one. And it is, there are four calls, but I'm really passionate about one. And it's the call from below. The call from below is in the Bible. It's in, I believe, Luke 16, chapter, where there's the rich man and the poor man, and they are crossing paths, and one is needing care, and the other one's just living lavishly. And one ends up in hell. And he learns to pray. And in his time of learning to pray, because he cannot escape hell, he cannot escape the torment, he wants someone. Now, the someone is the you one. You're the someone. He wants someone to go to his family's house, their address, wherever it is, whether it's in Chesterfield, Lake St. Louis, Ferguson, wherever it is. He wants someone to go and share the good news. He doesn't care who it is. But the time is too late. So the number one rationale that really moves me to do it is that there's a call from below to share the good news. There's a call from below. Now, there are many calls, but that call from below that someone cannot escape and someone wants their loved ones to hear the good news of the gospel. I love the fact of how it's taught us to be more um, purposeful about how we share and we take a paradigm shift because we're not using church language. We're not saying what God did. Not at the end we are, but we're not using church or the Bible or any of that because in who God leads you to, you never know who it is. And you don't want to shut down their listening because they said they may be, you know, I don't really want to hear about God. I'm really, that's something I'm going to do later. And so the teaching of being able to share the good news of the gospel of what God did for you without using any of that language. Are you interested? Yeah. I am selling it. Are you interested? Yeah. You, you, you certainly should be. But it has really impacted our ministry. We have one in a, you know, we don't have a hundred, but we're growing. We just started. We have one in Ferguson, of all places. It's in a barbershop where they meet. They, we have one in a park where they meet. We have another one in a home. And others are getting on board and changing their schedule to partake of what the throne of heaven has released to us now in this season of the church. 
Because is it harvest time? Well, absolutely. But we understand that the harvest is great. But sometimes we ain't got no laborers. We need some workers. We need some people bringing in the harvest instead of making church members to make disciples. And so that's our testimony. That's, that's why we love it. It has made us more purposeful about who we are because I've often said if you're a preacher, one of the things you should do is preach. If you are a believer, you should share what you believe. If not, go sell cars, go do something else. And so we, we, we absolutely embrace T for T. We've seen the multiplication. Most of us can add anything, but multiplication is where the anointing begins to take place. And it begins to multiply. And it's the simplicity of it because simple things multiply. Simple things multiply. Thank you so very much.